The key to sustainable leadership lies in the ability to thrive in uncertainty, ambiguity, and change. Grand Heron International brings you the Coaching Assistance Program, giving your employees on-demand coaching to manage through a challenging situation and arrive at a solution. Visit grandheroninternational.ca slash podcast to learn more. This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. Welcome to the Keep Leading Podcast, a podcast dedicated to promoting leadership development and sharing leadership insights. Here's your host, the Leadership Accelerator, Eddie Turner. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Keep Leading Podcast, the podcast dedicated to leadership development and insights. I'm your host, Eddie Turner, the Leadership Accelerator. I work with leaders to accelerate performance and drive impact through the power of professional speaking, facilitation, and executive coaching. I don't feel as if my boss appreciates my work. My colleagues don't take my ideas seriously. Have you found yourself saying either of those two statements or something to the like? If so, you have no doubt found yourself trying to save face, according to my guest today. What does it mean to save face? Why is it important? And what makes it especially important for leaders? Today, we will answer those questions and talk about why it's important to save face. We'll do so with Maya Hu Chan. Maya Hu Chan is a globally recognized management consultant, executive coach, and speaker. Maya was an anchor for the China Broadcasting Corporation in Taiwan, and she was the former CEO of a nonprofit organization in California. She's also served as a columnist for Inc. And she is the co-author of Global Leadership, The Next Generation. She has trained and coached thousands of leaders across the globe. And she is the author of the new book, Saving Face, How to Preserve Dignity and Build Trust. Maya, welcome to the Keep Leading Podcast. Thank you, Eddie. I am so excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Maya, tell me what else should my listeners know about you and your incredible background? Well, thank you for this wonderful introduction, Eddie. I was born and raised in Taiwan, and I live in San Diego, California. I have been um, working as an executive coach, leadership consultant, and speaker for many years. And I'm also a writer. I love to uh, share my ideas and particularly relate to leadership development. So that's my passion, and that's also the reason I I write this new book. So I'd love to share more with you today. Well, I'm looking forward to learning more today. And I have to tell you, you're from one of my favorite places in the whole world, Taiwan, (laughs) and you live in one of my other favorite places, San Diego. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I've been very, very fortunate. Uh, Yes, I was born and raised in Taipei, Taiwan. And in San Diego, this is my second home. I've been here for a long time. And, you know, um, I'm so glad that we have those two things in common. Yes. And I must tell you, I was originally from Chicago when I spent most of my life thinking that the Sears Tower was the world's tallest building. And then you all built Taipei 101, which was a cool building. I got a chance to go in there and I loved it. (laughs) <laughs> I know. That is a cool building, isn't it? Yes. You all took away our, our title as having the world's tallest building. 
<laughs> it looks the shape of the 101, Taipei 101 looks like a, a whole bunch takeout Chinese spa, food box stack up. So yeah, it's, it's a very cool looking building. Yes, and it is a true metropolis where you can get some of the world's best anything. Whatever you're looking for, it's in that building, and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So, Maya, congratulations on your new book, Saving Face, How to Preserve Dignity and Build Trust. And before even opening the book, I quickly realized there's a lot of weight behind this book. The foreword is written by the world's number one leadership thinker and executive coach, Marshall Goldsmith himself. Other coaches and leadership thinkers, such as Mark Thompson, Frank Wagner, Brian Underhill, Nancy Parsons, C.B. Bowman, and other CEOs have all endorsed this book. That's no small feat. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very grateful to uh, have all this wonderful thought leaders and leaders to endorse the book. And I have known them and worked with them for decades. So to have their, their support and endorsement, it's, it's really something that I'm very grateful for. Yeah, I was thinking just to know those people is a big deal. But to have them get behind your work, that says so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and most of them actually have a firsthand um, information and experience working with me directly, whether as a, uh, as a business collaborator and partner or my clients. And in fact, many of the senior executive, the C-suite leaders are my clients. So they have actually been working with me and um, directly as a, um, as a coaching client or uh, in the leadership development programs. Um, so, you know, I have uh, some really wonderful clients that I can go back to. We have maintained this long, wonderful relationship for, for years and years. Um, so I'm just so grateful for, the, for their uh, continuous friendship. Um, it has been wonderful and very in, enriching to our lives. Wonderful. So here's the big question. What does it mean to save face? That is a big question, right? I sh that's that's the title of the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so Eddie, um, I have been working with leaders around the world for over 20 years. And when I coach them and work with them about leadership, that I often hear them saying that, well, you know, I have some challenges motivating my people. And, you know, I'm frustrated by lack of engagement and uh, people that often tell me that they're, they're burned out or they're frustrated and they also are disappointed with their, the performance of their team or their, their employees. And, you know, when they, when they voice a lot of those concerns and challenges as a leader that, that you know, when you hear the, the term that that people often say, well, it's really not about the money. When, when they use this term, it's not about the money, that the real issue is often about face. So what, what is face, right? Face is, in my book that I'm defining it, that uh, this is one's self-esteem and self-worth. And face represents your identity, your reputation, status, your pride and dignity. So face represent your whole person, okay? And so when people often uh, talk about those type of issues with their employees, whether to motivate them or engage them or continue to support them and do the best work, that a lot of times that really we're not talking about financial aspect of the work. It's, we often talked about, do people feel appreciated, valued, and respected and do they feel that they are part of the team do they feel included and so the, the the quote that you used earlier eddie about people are saying well i often find that people are not my ideas are not being taken seriously or my boss doesn't appreciate my work those are the, the kind of comment that that i hear a lot from employees yes those quotes came right out of your book chapter one <laughs> 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 yes. And then so how can lead when it comes down to it, it's really all about face. That 
when people feel they're not being respected or included, they lack motivation, they check out, and they shut down. Okay, so it's so important for leaders to understand this concept of faith. Now, this is your faith is a universal concept, and beyond its origins in China. Okay, and the concept of faith speaks to a much deeper human needs for acceptance and for dignity. And also talk about the ways that we we grant dignity to one another. So let me just interrupt you just for a second there, Maya, because you're you're giving us a lot of good information. So the first thing that you said is, oftentimes you're hearing leaders, all the thousands of leaders you've coached around the globe. And by last count, I think you've been on every continent except Antarctica, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> to. That's my next stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was impressed when I saw your client list. But out of all these thousands of leaders across continents that you've coached, you're saying that the primary issue you've seen has not been about compensation. That's a staggering thought. You're saying it's been about this idea about saving face. And you've defined that for us. And now you're explaining why it's important to leaders. And you said this is a universal concept. So I just wanted to be, make sure we highlighted those two because those are two highly distinct concepts and thoughts. And I want to make sure we get that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when the leaders are working with people who are different from them, who are working with a very diverse um, workforce, and it, particularly in, in this day and age that we're working across geography, across time zones, and also leaders are often have to work with people from uh, different cultural backgrounds, different generations, different genders, and, and uh, different, um, different personalities. So giving all those diverse backgrounds, that leader is, needs to be very much aware that they can't run or operate like an autopilot. They can't just treat everybody as they would like to be treated. Okay, now there's a golden rule, right? The golden rule is that treat others as you would like to be treated. Mm -hmm. But then in this day and age that we're working with people from diverse backgrounds, there really should be a different set of rules. Instead of treating others as you would like to be treated, that you need to treat people as they would like to be treated. And that requires the leaders to really understand the concept of face so that you can honor face, you can also save face, and you can also need to avoid causing others to lose face. So those are the three key concepts of the of face. Honor face, save face, and avoid losing face. That's correct. Wonderful. Now, what made you write this book. You alluded to it earlier, but I wanted to kind of highlight that a little bit. You said that you were passionate about leadership development, but it has to be more that motivated you to do this. Yes. You know, um, I, I find that this concept is something is very often misunderstood. Now, when we say, uh, particularly in the Western culture, when we say this phrase, oh, you know, he's trying to save face. Um, yes, I hear that a lot. Always, yeah, when you when people use that phrase, what comes to your mind? I think usually in the Western culture, we think, oh, some somebody did something embarrassing, mm -hmm. and then we we want to save face. We want to you know avoid embarrassment, and that is a, a, um, a really a superficial way of looking at it, because if you look much deeper, that as I said, face represents one's dignity and self worth and your identity and your pride. So, you know, when, when people have uh, interpersonal issues, when you, uh, you, when, when you have conflicts, or when people quit their jobs, or when your team members stop offering their ideas, there is something else going on than just simply say, oh, there was something potentially that they're embarrassed or that unhappy about. That we need to go much deeper and say, what it is that caused those kind of friction. And as a leader, that we need to be much more aware of that. And then if we can understand and master the concept of face, that we'll be able to uh, make connections with people and break down barriers. And we can also build authentic, positive, long-term relationship with people, you know, across cultural generations and all sorts of human differences. 
So those are the, th- I like to maybe explain what I mean by honoring face, losing face and saving face. Please. Okay. So um, first of all, honoring face. Okay. Honoring face is literally about granting respect for to the other person. And so honoring face are the actions that you take to show respect, admiration to one or more people. So how do you honor face? Okay. There, there's so many different simple practical ways that you can do that to make the other person feel respected. For example, listen to them Mm -hmm. when they speak, ask them for their input and their opinions and give them credit for the work they do. Um, You express appreciation, you empathize with them and you give their voice equal time and weight. Okay. There's so many ways that you can honor face by doing those simple gestures to really show that, that you care about them and then they matter. So honoring face is showing dignity to other people. And you've just given us several ways we can do that. That's right. That's right. And so by honoring face, you're telling the other person, I see you, I hear you, and you matter. I see you, I hear you, and you matter. All right. Well, thank you, Maya. I'm enjoying talking to you. I'm talking to Maya Chan, a globally recognized management consultant, executive coach, speaker, and now author of Saving Face, How to Preserve Dignity and Build Trust. We'll have more with Maya right after this. Hey, C-Suite Radio listener, Greg Greenberg, General Manager of C-Suite Radio here. If you're enjoying this great show, then you're obviously aware of the power and explosive growth of podcasting. That said, you may not know the amazing reach and ease of podcast advertising. Here at the C-Suite Radio Network, we have over 150 podcasts reaching millions of listeners each month, and all with affordable advertising slots ready to promote you and your business. We'll even help create and record your ad at no extra charge. From business to lifestyle to entertainment, We have shows to target your audience. We even have the technology to geo-target ads by state. So why not speak directly to your customers right where they live and on the podcast they love? Reach out to C-Suite by emailing me at greg.greenberg at c-suitenetwork.com. Again, that is g-r-e-g-g dot g-r-e-e-n-b-e-r-g at c-suitenetwork.com. This podcast is sponsored by Eddie Turner, LLC. Organizations who need to accelerate the development of their leaders call Eddie Turner the Leadership Accelerator. Eddie works with leaders to accelerate performance and drive impact. Call Eddie Turner to help your leaders one-on-one as their coach or to inspire them as a group through the power of facilitation or a keynote address. Visit eddieturnerllc.com to learn more. This is Peter Margaritas, the Accidental Accountant, and you're listening to the Keep Leading Podcast with Eddie Turner. Okay, everyone, we're back. We're talking to Maya Hu Chan, a globally recognized management consultant, executive coach, speaker, and author of Saving Face, How to Preserve Dignity and Build Trust. Maya, before the break, you were telling us about what it means to save face, why you wrote the book, and you went through the concept of honoring face. Now, some may wonder, well, what does it mean to lose face? Absolutely. Well, um, losing face um, describes conditions where people feel devalued, humiliated, or unappreciated. So, you know, Eddie, when I grew up in Taiwan, that I uh, heard this very old Chinese proverb, and um, it says that spilled water is hard to regain. Okay, that's a very old saying. Spilled water is hard to regain. Yeah. So okay. just imagine that if you accidentally knock over a glass of water and you spill water all over the floor. Now, how hard is it to get it all back in the glass? It's right? hard. <laughs> oh, it's very hard, very hard. Now, even if you manage to get some of the water back in your glass, the water is not 
not the same anymore. Do you still want to drink it? I don't think so. Right. So what the saying um, means that when we cause somebody to lose face by saying or doing something that actually uh, damaged that relationship, it is difficult to repair. Okay. So as leaders or at, you know, as a human being that when we interact with other people, that we should be thoughtful about our actions and our behaviors that, and then always consider what is the impact, okay, uh, from the other person's point of view. So now losing face tend to, it can provoke all sorts of negative emotions. When you cause somebody to lose face, it provokes shame, fear, guilt, vulnerabilities, or other negative emotions. And so when people feel bad about themselves because of those actions that, that you take, they can directly impact how well they do their job and how much they speak up to share their ideas and even how long they stay with the company. Okay. So uh, the impact can be very profound and you can cause somebody to lose face unintentionally, meaning that you may say or do something that, that you think it's completely normal and you don't think much about it, but then can actually have a profound negative impact on somebody else. Then you don't even know it. Okay. And then, so that's why we have to be, we, we can't auto always operate an autopilot. So, for example, what are some of the things that can easily cause somebody to lose face? Um, giving negative feedback in, 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 in public. Um, you challenge, challenge someone or disagree with somebody in public in a disrespectful way. And you fail to acknowledge um, somebody's input. Or sometimes it could be insensitive uh, jokes or very subtle insult and or ignore somebody's comments, uh, interrupt them when they're speaking, uh, and, and so much more, okay? So uh, we, we may cause somebody to lose face and we don't even know it, we don't even realize it, and we don't even know the damage was done. So Maya, is there a story in your book that illustrates either of these principles that you can share with our listeners? Absolutely. So I have a perfect story that happened not long ago that uh, let's just call her Linda. Okay. So Linda, not a real name, of course, she works for a uh, high tech company and she, she manages a team that people are remote. Many of them actually work, you know, in other countries or in other cities. And she also has some people sitting right next to her in the same office, but she used Slack to communicate with them all day long. And even with people sitting right next to her. Now, so she will use Slack to share information, to uh, assign tasks, and she also used Slack to provide feedback. She will point out that somebody did something wrong or something needs to be fixed. Now, in her mind, that was a very efficient way to, to get things done, to communicate the information to her team. And what she did realize was that the people who receive those feedback are absolutely humiliated and embarrassed, and then that caused people, those individuals to, to shut down. And what was even worse was that everybody else reading those comments, reading those negative feedback, what's going through their mind was that, wow, I don't be, want to be on that person's shoes. Well, I better be careful. I'm not gonna take any chance. So then after a while that, it doesn't didn't take long that she created this fear-based team culture that people are not communicating, not sharing their ideas, or they're not taking any risks, and they're not trying out new ways of doing things. And then so there's there's very little innovation, and also people are keep their ideas to themselves. There's also not much of an engagement in communication, and so she was receiving some really difficult feedback during our coaching session and uh, this was the early on that she came to me and said i have a team that's not performing very well i don't know what's going on and then so when we review those feedback she realized that her communication and leadership style is causing people to lose face and as a result of that 
that people don't trust her and the, the engagement was very, very low. So then she made a um, very, very concerted effort to stop giving those critical feedback in public through, through Slack. She would take all the critical feedback offline and it, it, was, uh, it, it took her six months to turn things around, to rebuild the trust, and then to start honoring face and then provide positive feedback online and the negative feedback offline. And this, this has com completely transformed the way she leads. And she was more mindful and much more intentional with her actions and with her leadership style. So that's that's the example of how we can cause people to lose to lose face that you don't even realize it. Sometimes you may have the best intention that you think that was you didn't think much of it, but then you can have a, um, unintended consequences. So that's why I was talking about uh, not operate um, with autopilot. That we have to pay attention to see it's like you're learning how to drive in a foreign country that we have to pay attention to the signs pay attention to every step in the way where do you make the turn and if you you are not careful you don't watch it you can crash and burn <laughs> so don't run on the autopilot in fact in the book that i have listed um, a lot of examples and stories and also some really practical tips on how to navigate this um, this environment that well, particularly when we work with people that are diverse and also remote teams and how can we how can leaders be successful by honoring face and avoid causing others to lose face all right well, that is a wonderful example to share. And this whole concept that you're sharing with us today, saving face, how to preserve dignity and build trust, I think it's more important today more than ever. Uh, and I think it's certainly something that every leader and listener of the Keep Leading Podcast will benefit from. What is the most important message you'd like to leave our listeners with today, Maya? Yes, so... Um I think what I like to um, leave with the listener is that to think about face like a, a, a new social currency in our world today. A new okay. social currency. All right. Yeah. So face is our new social currency. The more you have it, the more you have, the easier and faster you can get things done. You can accomplish things. So face is like a social currency. We have to make more deposit into this account and continue to make that deposit to build a face. And then also, if you have to make a withdrawal, um, then you already build up enough reserve that you will not damage the relationship in the long term. Wonderful. Now, Maya, you are from Taiwan, we mentioned earlier, and I happen to have listeners in Taiwan and in the Mandarin-speaking world. Now, I can't speak Mandarin, but since you do, would you mind giving your key concept in Mandarin for our Mandarin audience, please? Okay, absolutely. I love to do that. Um, 大家好,我是胡梦君. Um, 这本书呢,我写的这本新书主要的 uh, message是 就是希望大家都能够尊重他人,尊重自我. Wonderful. And then can you ask them to keep listening and keep leading? Yes. 让我们继续聆听,继续领导。谢谢大家. Fantastic. Now, I have no idea if you said it right or not. I have to take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use any bad words. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds beautiful to me. So thank you, Maya. You're most welcome. Maya, is there a piece of advice that you've received that helps you keep leading as a leader or a favorite quote that you use? Yes, I have a quote that I put it in front of my desk that I look at it every day. And it's a quote from John Spence. The quote is that you become what you focus on and the people you spend time with. You become what you focus on and the people you spend time with. Yes. So this remind me that I should always focus on things that, that matters and, you know, do the right thing, not just doing things right. And also be mindful about 
what I'm focusing on and who I'm spending time with. Very well said. And Maya, where can my listeners learn more about you and connect with you? Oh, it's easy. Go to my website. So my website is my name, www.mayahuchan.com, and it's spelled M-A-Y-A-H-U-C-H-A-N. That's all one word, mayahuchan.com. Wonderful. And where can they pick up the book? Well, that's also even easier <laughs> to go to Amazon. So um, you have a choice of the printed version of the book, or you can order the ebook or audio book. It's all there on Amazon. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to encourage my listeners to follow you on social media, where you found that on LinkedIn and Twitter, your book. Pick up this book, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to miss out on reading this to learn how to save face and help preserve dignity and build trust as leaders. Maya, thank you so much for being a guest on the Keep Leading Podcast. Thank you so much, Eddie. It's such a pleasure. And thank you for listening. That concludes this episode, everyone. I'm Eddie Turner, the Leadership Accelerator, reminding you that leadership is not about our title or our position. Leadership is an activity. Leadership is action. It's not the case of once a leader, always a leader. It's not a garment we put on and take off. We must be a leader at our core and allow it to emanate in all we do. So whatever you're doing, always keep leading. Thank you for listening to your host, Eddie Turner, on the Keep Leading Podcast. Please remember to subscribe to the Keep Leading Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen. For more information about Eddie Turner's work, please visit eddieturnerllc.com. Thank you for listening to C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business. Hey, C-Suite Radio listeners, Jeffrey Hazlett here, chairman and CEO of the C-Suite Network. Has your business been seriously affected by COVID-19? Are you having trouble getting a loan to meet payroll? Is government red tape causing your business to shut down? Well, we're here to help. C-Suite Loans is a business program designed to provide companies just like yours with immediate access to capital that will keep your business not only afloat, but driving and thriving. C-Suite Loans works in conjunction with vetted funding to provide you with the best options based on your financial needs. We understand the challenges and we have a solution Visit csuiteloans.com today to learn more. Once again, that's c-suite, S-U-I-T-E, loans.com.